the crayfish tail. Even before the first dinosaur laid its egg, there were crayfish living here that were eating and digging and moving about and keeping our waters clear. Now, crayfish aren't really fish at all, but crustaceans with eight legs and claws, which they use for fighting and grabbing their food and digging holes in the shores. And as they live their watery lives and move around each day, they dig and build their hidey holes and help clear the rubbish away, which is why they're called a keystone creature, even though they're very small, because by cleaning away the dirt each day, they do a huge job for us all. Yes? Hello? Oh, I see. You don't know what a keystone creature is? Well, you see, just as with a stone arc where the keystone is the most important stone as it holds the whole building together, well, in the same way, a keystone creature, which in this case is the crayfish, is the one animal that all other animals and plants in and around our waters need to be there to enable them to live happy and healthy lives. OK, so you now understand how important a keystone creature like the crayfish is for everybody else? OK, bye. Now, when the crayfish first appeared on Earth, there was just one big continent. But then the land masses moved around, crayfish travelled wherever they went. And now living far apart from each other, they developed quite differently. So there wasn't only one type of them, but now several types, as you'll see. Yet each of them lived their lives in peace in their own new environments. But this all changed in the time it took for Columbus to put up his tents. Because crayfish are also a tasty treat for a number of hungry beasts. And for people too, like the Swedes and Finns, who like eating them at their feasts. And as for the kings and rulers there, they became a favourite dish. Which is why one type is called today by the name, the Noble Crayfish. Now if this was the end of our crayfish tale, what a happy ending it would be. But alas it is not, and now things will get bad. And this tale will get sad, as you'll see. For first, as our cities and farmlands grew bigger, then our waters very quickly became extremely unhealthy and smelly places, a kind of natural drain. And then one day, a big sailboat arrived, bringing with it some US crayfish, which they thought would be good for our hungry folks here, giving them plenty more food on each dish. But it wasn't only crayfish that came over that day, from that big land far over the sea, but a terrible something travelled on them too, something almost too tiny to see. And this terrible thing was a deadly disease, which is now called the crayfish plague. And it spread very quickly, like the US crayfish, sending lots of our guys to their graves. Now a question, why didn't we stop bringing more here once we'd seen all the best that they'd made? Well, because as you know, all that matters to some is the money that's made from this trade. And these US crayfish, who were used to this bug and more aggressive than their European cousins, very quickly took over their food and their homes and gave birth to new pests by the dozens. And after conquering most of our water bodies, the US crayfish were the only ones here. And now this became a big problem for us, as there was no one left to keep them clear. Until finally today, just a few of our crayfish are left living in remote streams and lakes. And unfortunately, they could disappear soon too. Just one alien pest is all it takes. And crazily now, after all of the trouble and mess that these US pests made, they are now starting to die off as well from the same awful crayfish plague. So then what can be done, you may ask, to reverse this sorry tale? Is there a magical cure or a plan or a trick that is guaranteed not to fail? Well, like everything else in the real world, easy solutions to problems are rare. But that doesn't mean that there aren't some ways that you can help with this job of repair. And the first thing to do with this alien pest is to tell our folks, don't, don't add, add no more. more. And this also means you dear pet owners too. So stop dumping these pests like before. And our cities and industries and farmers too can now also do their own fair share by not destroying or polluting our waters, but instead treating them with some care. So now that you know our crayfish's tail and how long they've lived in our streams and how selflessly they have done good for us all and how in return we've acted mean. So you Finns and you Swedes who like feasting in summer, and you other Europeans too, if you start to look after our crayfish and waters, then the future will look after you.